Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we shall be learning about adjoint operator. So let us first see what is the adjoint operator. Suppose we are given some operator T defined from one space X to another space Y. And this operator is given to be bounded as well as linear operator, right? Bounded and linear. So in that case, with this operator T, we can then associate another operator T cross, right? So this operator T cross is called the adjoint operator of the operator T. So exactly what is this T cross? So let's have a look here. This T cross, how we can define this T cross? So that is the question. For that, if we take any linear functional on the space y and what are functionals they are function of functions so they act on some functions taken from the space y right so if we take the bounded linear functional g so that means we g is bounded as well as linear then g is defined for all of the elements small y taken from the space y because that is a functional so in this case because our map T is defined from the space X to the space Y. So that means if we take some small X from the space capital X. So corresponding to this, we, we may after applying the operator T, we may have some element Y which is present in the space Y, right? According to the definition of operator. So we are setting this element Y to be T of X. So we say we have a functional represented by f so you see how we are constructing the definition for a joint just have a look here so just be attentive on looking at this one so corresponding to some functional here in y we have we are defining y is equal to tx and moreover here in the space x, we are having some functional f such that when we apply this f onto x, what do we get? We get g applied onto t of x, right? So basically, when you apply f onto x, you get some g applied onto y. And what is y? y is your t of x. And this is true for every element small x, which is contained in the space capital X. So this is the definition how we are able to define F and G. So basically we have a relationship between this, these two spaces X and Y in terms of the functional G and F, right? So now we say F is linear here. Why? Because both G and T are assumed to be linear. F is also bounded because both F and G, uh, G and T, they are assumed to be bounded. So we can also see the modulus value of F of X, that is the modulus of G of T X. And this thing is less than equal to the norm of G multiplied by the norm of T of X. And this thing norm of T of X is further less than equal to the norm of T norm of X, right? This, all this thing is true using the properties of norm. Now, if we define for every x the norm of x to be 1 and we take the supremum over all those x. So, in that case, the norm of f, so which is nothing but this thing, is less than equal to g, the norm of g times the norm of t because this thing would become 1, right? So, from here, this thing is bounded, this thing is bounded and this thing, the norm of f is less than the product of two bounded terms, two finite terms. So it has to be finite. If this is finite, the corresponding functional f is bounded. So from this construction here, we say f is both linear as well as bounded. The third thing here, we say Therefore, for every variable or for every functional g here, which is taken from y dash. Now, what is y dash here? This is the 
dual space of y containing all the functional so we are taking one such functional as g and if we are able to define f of x which is nothing but g of t of x so this thing is defined so we have we are taking the element g and corresponding to this g we are defining some uh, other functional f according to this so basically what i am trying to say here is suppose from the space x to the space y we have some operator t which is linear as well as bounded so what we can do we we can take the dual space of this space y which we call by y dash so from this y dash we can define another operator which is t cross to the dual of this space x dash so basically we are reversing the operator t in a sense that it now maps all the elements from the dual space of y to the dual space of x right so this is what happens and in this case we have if we take x from the space capital x then what t does then t uh, takes this element x to some element y present in the space capital y and what it does it take some functional g here it applies uh, the functional g on to the element of y so it results in another functional f which is applied on to the element of x so basically we are moving from g to f by this t cross and what is this this is the adjoint operator so this is the definition so let's have a more uh, precise mathematical definition here so we have the adjoint operator t cross this is defined uh, by defining t from the space x to the space y so we define a bounded linear operator where both of these x as well as y they are normed spaces then corresponding to this operator t here we can define the adjoint operator t cross from the dual spaces y dash to x dash so notice here we have reverse order from y dash to x dash of t such that f of x is equal to g of t x and intermediate to this g of t x could also be written as t cross g of x so this is how you define the operator t cross here so t cross is acting on the elements of y dash which are nothing but the functionals and how they are acting so it basically applies g of t of x and by definition this is nothing but f of x so ultimately we are reaching at some element of the dual space x dash over here so this is the definition for a joint operator so the next important question is why out of sudden we are learning about these adjoint operators so it is because whenever we wanted to solve any kind of operator equation or in fact whenever we wanted to solve any system that system in operator form could be represented by kf is equal to m form where your phenomena is represented by k the input parameters they are represented by f and m is the results or the observations that you obtained by performing that particular experiment so this operator equation that occurs in many applications and the operator here in most of the equations or most of the systems is a compact linear operator so this compact linear operator this plays a crucial role in solving such equations and in fact most of the equations are integral equations so the general theory which is developed to solve such equations they use the essence of adjoint operators so that is why we are studying all of these adjoint operators okay so now having convinced why do we want to study them 
let's see few properties of adjoint operators the first thing is that this adjoint operator here is both linear as well as bounded another thing that we have already uh, that we know is the norm of this operator t cross is the same as that of the operator t so they are, they both give you the same distance moreover if your operator t represents some matrix suppose we call that to be t subscript e then the adjoint operator represented by t cross what would be that in that case it would be nothing but the transpose of this matrix t e over here so if you have some operator represented as matrix so the adjoint operator would nothing be but the transpose so here you could have a more uh, understandable sense of adjoint operator the next property is if you take any two operators which are both linear and bounded operators defined from the space x to the space y then if you add these two operators and then define the adjoint operator that would simply be equal to defining the adjoint operators first and then adding for the next property we say if you take alpha which is some scalar quantity and if you multiply that with your operator and then define the adjoint so that would nothing be the adjoint uh, the uh, scalar itself multiplied by the adjoint of t right so from here you could also say that the adjoint of, of some scalar is nothing but the scalar itself the next property involves that of composition so suppose our operator t is defined from x to y and the operator s is defined from y to z in that case we can define this composition as t uh, s and t which takes take you from the space x to the space z so what would be the adjoint of this composite composite operator st so its adjoint would be available when you reverse the order here so you first perform the adjoint for t and then form the adjoint for the operator s so basically we say the adjoint for s that will take you from the dual space of z to the dual space of y and the adjoint for t would take you from the dual space of y to the dual space of x so in this case we can only define the composition like this t cross s cross such that this thing would be equivalent to taking the adjoint for this thing so that is what we are saying over here in this property the last property it tell you that if you define the inverse of an adjoint operator so it would be the adjoint of the inverse operator right so these are some simple properties so all of these properties the most important of all is the property of adjoint operator which links us towards this compact linear operators and this is the property that we are most interested to see so let's have a look what is this so we have a theorem listing this property which says if t is some linear operator defined from some space x to some space y which are obviously normed spaces then if t is compact then the corresponding adjoint operator is also compact now this is very good an interesting property why because it says if you have some operator t the corresponding adjoint operator is also compact now for seeing the proof for this theorem we have to go to the next video for this so i hope you have a friendly introduction to the adjoint operators well that is it for this video thank you for watching